back guys, welcome back. So in the last video I talked about how you could connect your Motorola DMR radios to a computer and basically start like a, a data connection between the two. So it's, it's so simple to do this. Literally, these radios, the Motorola radios, any, not just the SL4000, but any Motorola DMR radio has basically got its own built-in network interface. So as soon as you connect it to the computer by a programming cable or by Bluetooth, you've immediately got a data connection which will go over the air, over DMR. So what we're gonna do today, guys, is test that network connection out and actually create a simple chat system with keyboard input between two computers with the data going over radio. So I'm gonna use a couple of Mac computers to do this, basically because that's what I use day to day. You can do it with Windows, you can do it with Linux. I like the way Macs have got a proper terminal, it's a bit more Linux-like. So the Mac's there, and we're gonna be connecting an SL4000 radio, one of these little Motorola's, um, by, I'm actually gonna do this by USB so I can show you both sides. So I've got a few channels configured here. Um, there's not really anything you have to do, really. It will work on pretty much any channel. So there's nothing specific you really have to set up in the CPS, it will just work on a digital channel. So I'm gonna start by plugging in my USB cable um, into the Mac, which literally is just a straightforward data USB cable, micro USB, into the side of the radio. Just plug that in should hear it do something, there you go. That noise is most likely telling you it's charging. So it's actually charging the radio as well as having a data connection. Now if you go back into the Mac and look in the preferences, if you go to network here, what you'll see, Motorola device connected. There's its network properties. Basically I haven't done anything, haven't installed any software, that just works straight out of the box. That is so cool. Now this is a good point to make sure your Wi-Fi connection is turned off and you've got no external internet connection to your computer because otherwise it could mess up um, but it will mess up what you're trying to do because what we're trying to do is communicate without um, any internet so just make sure it's turned off and what we're going to have to do now is create a bit of routing from the router side to our over the air network now you can do this on mac os by using this command it's the same on linux i think and um, i think it's very similar on windows but basically we're, we're sudo so we're giving administration um, rights and we're gonna add a route using this IP scheme, 13.0.0. Now two is actually a radio ID. So that is, the radio ID is actually two. The DMR ID is two. Um, don't ask me what happens if you've got a longer number like the ham system uses. Um, but basically, um, this is how I've kind of worked out how it works. But basically, yeah, two is a radio ID and then that is your router there. Now by doing that, you're basically forwarding all the all kind of traffic to and from the radio network to the gateway. This becomes our IP address of our radio and that's what we're gonna use on the other computer to connect to this one. So you can hit enter on this, I'm not gonna do it. It will tell you that it's basically done it and created that route already. And if you wanna check, you know, it's actually done that, you can then use this command here, netstat.nr. You get a load of stuff come up um, and then basically it will be up the top here. So you can see 13.0.02 um, with a gateway 192.168.10.1. So that is sorted. If you get in a mess with it, you can go into here and, and remove these. Instead of using add, use delete. It's very simple. So this is basically this side set up and you know the radio is gonna communicate with the computer. So as far as the networking side is concerned, that's done. So we're gonna swing around to the other computer on the other side. So we've got Motorola R7, lovely new radio there, and we've got like another MacBook over here. Now over this side, I'm connecting the radio to the computer by Bluetooth. I've already paired the devices, I'm not gonna show you that, it's not rocket science. Um, and basically, you can see here, we've got our Motorola. If you right click that, it connects to a personal area network. It's, it's really cool, this. Um, and it creates a, an actual physical you know, network connection between the radio and the computer. And you can see there, connected, it's got its own IP address, um, everything's looking good there. And you'll notice we've got a similar sort of setup to the wired connection, but it actually uses a different router scheme, 192.168.11.1 um, um, and not 10.1. So you have to sort of bear that in mind if you're gonna, when you're gonna set this up. So I'm gonna hit go on this one. It's gonna ask me for my password and we're gonna add that. And then there you go, so it's showing it's created that 
kind of route there. So back over to this computer, what we're gonna use is a little program called Netcat, which is built into Linux. I think it's built into Linux, you might have to install it. Um, it's definitely built into um, to Macs. So what it will do with this command is it will listen for any connections on this port here, 10001. It doesn't matter what port you set, you can set what port you like, just make sure they're the same on both computers. Um, so yeah, if we run that, it basically just does nothing. Um, this is pretty pretty kind of raw <laughs> terminal stuff here, guys. So it will just sit there and wait for a connection. We spin back around to the other computer and we'll try and connect to it. So back over to this machine, we're gonna run Netcat again, slightly different command. Um, we've got the IP address of the other computer connected over radio and then that port 10001, important. So if we hit enter on this, we, we should see is our radios chinking and we've got a TCP connection between the two sides. How awesome is that? And you know, the radios, because the way the radios work, they do a lot of acknowledgement. So there's, because there's a fair bit of traffic, it's not a huge amount of traffic, but it's more, even at this level, it's still probably a bit too much. Um, so they're kind of, you know, negotiating between the two radios, making sure they've got all of their packets. Um, so you can't do anything crazy here, but what you can do is you can literally just type, you know, some text here, hit go, you'll see it on the uh, on the radio there. And then over this side, we'll see this radio start, you know, doing some stuff. And then our hello message appears there. So we can go hi back, hit that, radio's doing some stuff there. And then over here, we've got hi. So you can do a simple chat between the two sides, completely over radio. Um, you can send loads of text if you want. Um, obviously don't try and send huge files and stuff over this because it, I mean you can, but it, it probably won't work. What's pretty cool is if we just bung a load of text in there and then just do a voice kind of communication between the two and actually just hit enter. Now what happens is that text goes into a buffer. So as soon as you release the PTT, it basically will just start to forward that message you see that's happening and then it will come through after. So that, that is, it's pretty neat. It's pretty good for sending text in raw format. You can send files as I've said, but if you just get some text here from this native instruments, um, read me file and just dump it in there. Um, you see that obviously the radio's going nuts. See it all coming through over here. It hasn't quite got to the bottom of the, um, the file there. It is pretty robust because if you think, oh no, it's not worked, it's not sending it just wait and it will actually, you know, flush the buffer out and, and it will actually get through. It's pretty resilient. And if you look on the SDR, you can see all the data going backwards and forwards. Obviously there's no antenna on here, so you can see that the weaker one is gonna be the SL4000, um, you know, as it replies, it says, yeah, we've got some data. This is just sending loads of stuff out. Those are probably like, acknowledgement saying you can sort of see one there yeah i've got it and then so they're talking to each other backwards and forwards it's pretty clever just like packet radio really you see right at the bottom there your native instruments team and then right at the bottom of there your native instruments team there as well i mean yeah i know that file's only 8k but even so <laughs> so yeah you're not going to be able to stream your netflix or, or anything like that over it but what a great kind of start to something that could potentially be something else. I mean, I'd like to see this being implemented into like maybe like a modern form of packet radio or something like that. Because with this, it's so simple to set up. You haven't got to, you know, configure TNCs. You haven't got to, you know, mess around with configuration files or set up your own BBS. And let's face it, there's quite a lot of ham radio operators out there um, with DMR radios shoved in the cupboard because they got fed up with the, the network side of things and all of that. I will say, I only know of this working with Motorola DMR radios. It probably works with Hytera as well, but it all depends on, you know, the communication uh, protocol and how things are sort of set up um, with those two different radios. So I'm not sure if they're going to be cross compatible yet. Probably could be made to be. I wouldn't be surprised. But how interesting, eh? I mean, you see me using business frequencies there. That could be encrypted. So you could have a completely encrypted, you know, TCP connection there. Um, I haven't had any luck with doing kind of, you know, very, very narrow bandwidth kind of websites or things like that. Actually, Netcat is probably the only thing I managed to get working. It would actually be really cool if someone took this on as a project and, you know, developed some sort of chat application, proper one that kind of handles connecting, disconnecting, you know, um, showing who's typing, who's who's talking, multiple connections, 
file transfers, all of that sort kind of side of things, that would be that would be really useful. And on the business side of things, it'd be great for kind of communicating information from sensors where there's no internet or Wi-Fi connectivity, that sort of thing. This is a great little easy to deploy data network. Anyway, guys, hope you found this useful. Proper geeking out in this one. I'll let that sink in and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.